Hey everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 12, Episode 14. Shameless, not ruthless. Okay, we are wasting no time. We immediately get into PK's new teeth. He and Dorit are showing up at the dental office and this is actually just for a cleaning. Apparently, he got those new teeth two years ago, and Dorit's like, he hasn't stopped smiling since. Not only that, I guess because he got new teeth, Dorit decided she needed to get new teeth too. Now, look at this before and after of Dorit's teeth. That can't be the teeth she was born with, right? Those look like those flippers that Teresa just got. One like even straight piece of enamel. (laughs) Like an anime cartoon. So honestly, this doctor, if he did her new teeth, those look amazing. They look natural, beautiful. Good job. So the dentist comes in now and he hugs Dorit and he tells them both that they're aging in reverse. And Dorit goes, oh, well, I am at least. And the doctor's like joking. Yeah, as soon as you you got your new teeth and your life changed for the better. And PK says... Well, why isn't that happening for me? Ever since I got my new teeth, I've had a home invasion and a DUI. Okay, hold up a second. You think the home invasion was your bad luck and not Dorit's? Look, I'm not saying this wasn't really bad for you too. Of course, as her husband and not being there, of course it was bad for you. But um, I'm going to go with this one's more Dorit's bad luck. And the DUI... That wasn't bad luck. That was you drinking and then driving. Okay, so while PK is getting his teeth cleaned, Dorit is telling the dentist that she's involved in this new charity called Homeless Not Toothless. Shameless Not Ruthless. And the dentist is like, okay. (laughs) You can tell he's like, "What, what does this mean for me? Why are you telling me about your charity? Or he could have been like, what is with that name? So apparently Sharon Stone is on the board and Sharon Stone used to be Dorit's neighbor. She got Dorit on the board and now Dorit is having an event at her home. She has invited all of the housewives and the dentist and his wife. Sorry, dental hygienist, you're too poor to be invited. You know what I'm realizing? My Anna Delvey and my Diana are kind of merging. Look at the diamonds. Do you see the diamonds on the class? You look poor. <laughs> Let's be real. Same vibe. I woke up and I felt like I was run over by a truck. Because yesterday I was run over by a truck. Okay, so the doctor will gladly come. And also he would like to give to one lucky recipient the gift of a beautiful smile. Dorit in her confessional is like, that's when she's telling us that Sharon Stone used to be her neighbor. And when she got involved with homeless, not toothless, shameless, not ruthless, she knocked on my door and said, this is a great charity. You should look into it. Okay, now we get one more look at PK's befores and ooh, it's rough, people. PK's like, imagine what a catch I am if I could get Dorit with those teeth. (laughs) Next, we are at Sutton with Sutton and her assistant, Josh. Sutton looks like she's, you know, doing some paperwork at her desk. And Crystal comes to visit. She says she's still tired from COVID. Sutton's like, oh, I know. It just knocks you out. And Porter has been working at my store helping out. And yesterday, she just said she had a sore throat. So you want to come work at my store? Because apparently I need to hire people. And Crystal goes, you better be paying a lot. And Sutton goes, I pay commission. And then Shady Bravo shows us shots of the store and how it's completely empty. So Crystal asks her about the wine tasting party at Lisa Rinna's house. She's like, how was it? And Sutton goes, terrible. Let me just stop you there because I saw Lisa yesterday and I heard her side of the story. Sutton. (laughs) Lisa blew up at me. Crystal. Well, she's really angry at you. Sutton, she didn't say that at our lunch when we were alone, but when she has an audience, she explodes and looks at me like she's trying to kill me. 
And Crystal's like, do you want to fix this? Sutton said, I've done everything that I could. This is on her. It's not on me. Yeah, that's right. She said something on Watch What Happens Live, which was in solidarity of her friend Garcelle, because Lisa went after Garcelle for not sending a thank you note to Harry for the sauce, even though Garcelle thanked him, like, in person. So, it, yes, that's what it was about. Sutton didn't really care that Rinna didn't thank her for sitting at her table at Elton John's gala. She just said that as a way of, like, Oh, you're going to come after Garcelle? Well, you don't thank people for things either. That's it. She didn't like that Rinna was trying to make Garcelle look bad. And regardless of whatever Lisa or Harry's publicist told them, Sutton did pay for a table. She has the receipt. She showed up. She was there. And I don't think anybody's disputing that they sat at the same table. Should Sutton have said anything on Watch What Happens Live? No. But she apologized for it. Rinna accepted her apology at Harry's birthday party. And then at that recent lunch the two of them had, Lisa admitted that it still kind of bothers her, but since Sutton knew it was wrong and Sutton apologized, she really needs to let it go. That's where things ended. Then at her wine tasting party, she gets all fired up again? I don't know. Maybe the alcohol is playing a part in this. Okay, let's say it is. Let's say it was because she was really drunk. Okay, then three days later, you're with Crystal and you're still really mad when you're sober? No. If anything, you owe Sutton an apology for screaming at her. Yeah, Sutton is right. She's done all she can and the rest is up to Lisa. Forgive her, don't forgive her, but don't keep switching it up. So Sutton changes the subject and asks Crystal, so what's going on with you uh, lately? And Crystal said, I talked to Lisa about her daughter Amelia being anorexic. Then we see a flashback to Lisa and Diana. I think they were at Crystal's house. Lisa tells her, you know, we were talking about your eating disorder. We were. We, we, we were. We talked about it. This is also, this is what bothers me about her owning it, right? She's famous for that. Oh, I'm going to tell her that we all talked about it behind her back before Sutton tells her, and then it looks bad. So whether she was right or wrong, she somehow feels vindicated by owning it. Yeah, we did. We talked about you. Anyway, and she's like, and Amelia got help. And Diana said, I really think you should do something about it. That there was a fly and I didn't eat all day. I woke up, I was hungry, I stepped on a hot frying pan and I didn't eat all day. <laughs> I don't even know what that one means. So Crystal said, you know, I understand why you all talked about it because most of you like don't understand it and you're concerned for me, Sutton. Yeah, it seemed to me, I don't know. <laughs> And Crystal goes, just say it. I don't know if the concern was like grave concern for you or... And Crystal goes, judging me? Sutton, a little. And Crystal said, because I have an eating disorder? Sutton goes, eh, you know, it was more like, hmm, what is this? And Crystal goes, this is a lifelong journey is what it is. So Crystal sees a pattern of her vulnerability being met with judgment from some of these ladies. Crystal tears up and she says that she doesn't want to be questioned about how or when she seeks help because that is all part of the process. Yeah, that makes sense. Because really just seeking therapy for anything a trauma you've been through or whatever is going on. You have to be ready for that. You can't force somebody to seek help because it won't work. So in that regard, like I do understand what Crystal's saying. She knows she needs help. It has to be on her timeline when she gets help. That's all part of the process for her. Okay, next we are at Diana's house. And uh, I'm seeing a theme here, people. Asher is sitting at the piano playing and singing. Why do you love me? Would you be there when I'm drowning in the depths of my despair? I just want you to hold me so I'll never be lonely. First of all, why did I think that baby grand piano was part of the Christmas decorations? <laughs> 
I, I just thought it was, of course, this is Diana. You know, she leaves a diamond on the bar. So I just naturally assumed that it was an elaborate Christmas decoration, but maybe it was just their piano. Or Santa bought it for Asher. Anyway, he's playing the piano and singing. And Diana kind of comes down the stairs, and then she just sits at the bottom of the stairs and listens. Diana tells us that her favorite time of day is when Asher forgets that she's in the house and he's on the piano singing. He knows you're there. Yeah, he forgot he wasn't alone in the house with the Bravo camera crew all around the piano. Anyway, she walks over to him and he tells her it's one of the songs for his shoot, I thought he said. Is he making a music video? Probably. (laughs) As I think about it, probably. And then Asher says, it's fun to have you along because you're like the brain behind all of it. Yeah, the brain, it's pronounced wallet. And then we see these pics of Asher when he was on Broadway. They look like they were taken a few, you know, months ago. (laughs) I swear to you, I'm not making this up. Diana says in her confessional, he is like a child. (laughs) Yeah, we know. (laughs) So we're not even pretending anymore, are we? He is like a child. He's very sweet. He needs my hardness and my strength because he is not confrontational at all. Oh, anyway, I guess they need to push off having a baby till January or maybe January is the date they're pushing it off. I don't know. They're like, it's fine. And Diana said she just needs to like relax for a little while. And they also think it's better if Eliana is a little bit older. Then we see a pic of Asher and Eliana, and oh my God, she is his mini-me. Or, you know, even minier me, I guess. Next we are at Kyle's, and Erica has come over to um, Stretch, I guess. We meet Dustin, who is the Stretch coach. There's a coach for everything. My dog could be my Stretch coach. You should see her in the morning. Anyway... They're they're out on the tennis court in Kyle's backyard. And good God, there's a gong. Why, Dustin? Why the gong? I'm pretty sure you can stretch without a gong. Oh, it's a sound bath. Well, all right. (laughs) So Erica goes first, and she has done assisted stretching before. Is that what we're calling it now? And it's, you know, they're both limber. It looks painful. Didn't hear the gong once. But that doesn't stop Kyle from wanting a gong of her own. Where can I get one of these? And Dustin says, and I'm not making this up, it's from a website called Gongs Unlimited. I was literally going to make a joke and say that he said gongs are us. But it's not funnier than the truth. It's from a website called Gongs Unlimited. I'm sure Amazon has a gong. If anyone's interested, use one of my links. I'm actually pretty positive they do. I'm going to look it up. Uh, Yeah, they do. $500. I'll link it down below. I won't. So Kyle isn't sure of the spelling. So she said D-O-N-G-S, Dustin doesn't hear her very well. And he said, yes, G-O-N-G-S. Kyle, oh, gongs. I thought you said dongs unlimited. I know you think that's funny. Maybe you're just pandering to Erica. Pretty sure you didn't think that you could buy a gong at a place called Dongs Unlimited. I think Dustin made that up. I'm not going to go look it up, but it's just too. Maybe he just panicked and he didn't know what to say. Anyway, um, yeah, Erica thought it was funny. She goes, (laughs) Dong's Unlimited sounds like my porn search. (laughs) Guys, you know what? I bet Erica hasn't had any sex at all. She talks about it too much. It's like she's overcompensating for the fact that she's not having any sex at all. You know what really makes me sad? That she seems so adamant about just having sex and not a relationship. Don't get me wrong, that's fine. If that's all she wants right now, she just wants to have fun, she doesn't want to get into anything serious, that's fine. That's her right and that's fine. But it's so earnest that it sounds like someone who's protecting themselves. 
What if it does develop into something more? Are you going to push him away? I, I don't know. Start. Kyle asks her now about this guy that she's seen multiple times. But, you know, it's just sex, not a relationship. Just providing a service for one another. Erica said he's older. And Kyle goes, Tom older? And she goes, no, no, no. Not as old as Tom, but older than me. Well, I mean, that could be anything. <laughs> That's a broad range. What she needs is someone young enough to clean her pool. Okay, and realize that sounded suggestive. But you know, I mean, actually clean her pool. I need a man who can clean my pool. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Hey, that could be her pickup line at the bar. I just need somebody to clean my pool, if you know what I mean. And then when she brings them back to her house, she could just take them in one door and right back out to the dirty swamp in her backyard. <laughs> Better yet, and I know this is cliche, why don't you just do the pool boy in exchange for cleaning the pool? Anyway, Kyle, who, you know, she's been out of the gossip loop because of COVID. So she's got to bring up Diana's Christmas party, which was three weeks ago. That's the last time Kyle had any news to tell. So she um, fills in Erica about what Garcelle said while Erica was outside. Sometimes we can't always be in denial just for the safety of our friendship. Which there's nothing wrong with that, except that Erica thinks that Garcelle is not coming from a good place. But better yet, this is Erica's takeaway. I guess you just can't have a good time around some people. Really? You mean like Rinna? Because she's supposedly the one that called you out on the carpet, remember? Made you be accountable. You talking about her? Is she the person you can't just have fun around? So then Kyle said, um, is everybody going to Dorit's black and gold party? And Erica said, I think so. Everybody I talk to anyway. Kyle, I'm confused. What is it? Erica, homeless, not toothless. <laughs> Kyle laughs. They both laugh. Not laughing at the charity, people. Just laughing at the name. It isn't great. Okay, it's time for the getting ready montage. At Crystal's house, she's getting her hair and makeup done while Rob is in the closet picking out what he's gonna wear. Just a gold tie. He wanted to buy a gold jacket, but Crystal said no. Sutton and Garcelle are FaceTiming each other while they're getting ready. Sutton said, if you see me sitting next to Rinna, please switch seats with me. And Garcelle said, you got it. Kyle and Rinna are FaceTiming while they're having their glam done. Kyle asks her if Harry's going, and she said, no, Harry's not coming because Harry's not going out. What a great excuse that would be. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't on Friday because I'm not going out. It's simple, it's honest. Why bother with I can't come because I fell out of a tree and broke my rib and then I tripped over my diamonds. I keep my diamonds in a big pile of diamonds. And then I tripped over the diamonds and I fell face first into a burning candle. And also, I don't like satin. Anyway, even though he's tired, Mauricio is going. I guess Kyle's whole family got COVID when she had COVID. Okay, now we are at Dorit's house and everything looks exquisite, including Dorit herself. She is a vision in golden black. PK has a shiny black shirt on. PK's like, where's my bombshell? And Dorit said, where's my baby love bug? So PK has arranged for a special surprise guest to appear like he did a couple years ago with boy george okay he's done it again so the party planner said okay so the lights have to go off at a certain time so that this person can be brought out and then the lights will come back up again and pk says i can do that dorit's like why don't we let somebody else do that pk pk i can turn on the lights dorit's like honey baby Love bug, if you ruin my reveal, mister. And then she kisses him on the nose and they kiss and I don't know, do they have a good relationship? They might, they actually might. I think Beverly Hills has a few good marriages. I'd say what you want about them. They're not great people, but Kyle and Mauricio seem to have a good relationship. Rinna and Harry, Crystal and Rob. Crystal's pretty forgiving about Rob's side gig. <laughs> Oops, may have spoken too soon. I guess PK is fumbling with the remote and the lights go down, then way up. And you hear Dorit shout, PK, you're scaring me. 
She really wants someone more capable on the remote, dude. Work in the light switch may not be the hill you want to die on. Okay, Rina and Erica are riding together. Kathy Hilton is the first guest to arrive. That's new. And she's there with her friend, Dwight. Then we get to see a flashback to a party at least Vanderpump's house. Was it Ken's birthday? I don't know. Everyone's in white. I can't remember. But it turns out that it was Dwight that threw an aging Ken Todd into the pool. And, you know... It was shallow water and he lost his balance and then his head went under and he almost drowned. I mean, yeah, that was Dwight. Anyway, Diana is the next to arrive and no Asher. She said Asher cannot attend because he is doing concert live virtual something. Something is very complicated. Okay. Okay, back in the car with Rinna and Erica. Erica says, this party should be fun. Rinna, I already did a shot of tequila at home. <laughs> Erica, I'm going to be helping you out of this party. And Rinna goes, oh, I'm not going to get that up. <laughs> then Erica laughs like the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal and Rob are the next to arrive. No third? Hmm. Is she already there? Maybe. Maybe it's Sydney Grossman, the charity representative. Okay, so we learn a little bit more about her. Her father is actually the CEO of Homeless Not Toothless, Shameless Not Ruthless. He's Dr. Jay Grossman. Is he the one to blame for that name? God, that's a bad name. Hey, I'm homeless, not toothless. Now just stop. These people are homeless not toothless. I don't know. I hate it. I hate the name. I didn't hate the name of Jamie Lee's charity. At least there's that. My hand in yours. Maybe this could be my tooth in yours. My, my tooth in your mouth. I'll work on it. Oh, wow. Okay. Sorry. This Jay Grossman is also apparently a sperm donor. He's telling Dorit that he did um, 23andMe and he found that he had six other children that he fathered, not with his wife. He says to Dorit, apparently I donated a lot. That's, that's inappropriate. I don't think you should talk about your sperm to some woman who's on the board of your charity. I d don't talk about your sperm. Meanwhile, Kathy's chatting with some people and she's talking about the importance of teeth. Kathy, we all need teeth and it's hard to talk without teeth. Everyone's like, yes, that's right. Kyle and Mauricio arrive now. Kyle's in black and she's wearing this gold purse on her arm. And I guess Mauricio picked that out for her and she goes, yeah, where's your gold? And he said, it's in there. PK has a gift for me. So PK gifts him with a Versace belt with a gold belt buckle. Why? Those two are getting very close. Okay, now we see PK talking to Rob and Erica. <gasps> oh, I smell a threesome in the making. Oh, I shouldn't have said I smelled it. So PK tells them, when I got my DUI, I was having dinner with Lionel Richie and John Legend. And the policeman says, where have you been? I said, out to dinner. He said, with who? I said, John Legend and then Lionel Richie. He must have thought, Erica interrupts, that you were an asshole. Pretty much. PK goes, so that wasn't a great start. And then the whole thing just went from bad to worse. Rob's like, ugh. You know, don't think you're impressing Rob Minkoff with your little dinner with John Legend and Lionel Richie, okay? He probably just came from a threesome with those two. So, so PK says, and he's looking right at Erica, which makes me wonder if Dorit set him up to do this. He said, and the real lesson is when you think you're okay, you might not be. Erica, huh. <laughs> That's it. That's all he got out of her. Okay, Sutton arrives now, and almost immediately, Rinna. Hi, Sutton. How are you? Sutton's like, I'm good. Rinna, oh, good. Mwah, mwah. You know, that fake little air kiss. Mwah. So the ladies realize that they haven't all been together in the same place in like over six months. And Diana said, well, um, you know, Cherie is not here. Rinna's like, oh, yeah, she, Cherie has COVID. 
So yeah, I, everybody hasn't been together. And then finally, Dorit's dentist and his wife and Garcelle arrive. Not together. <laughs> Threesome alert. Rob, can I get you to sign off on something real quick? It's handy having him right there, though. I will say that. Now PK and Mauricio are talking about the ladies. They're standing together. And Mauricio said, Dorit's dress is beautiful and Erica's dress is short. PK, who wins? Mauricio, my wife. Yeah, he's not an idiot, PK. PK, if we have to take the wives out of it, who wins? Mauricio said, Dorit. And he goes, no, my wife is out of it. Your wife is out of it. Who wins? Count of three. One, two, three. Simultaneously, PK says, Erica. And Mauricio says, Rena. Uh, Rena? P PK, oh, <laughs> you went Rena, huh? <laughs> Oh, all I have to say is, uh, you're both wrong because Garcelle is there. Don't you guys think Garcelle is probably the most beautiful of the ladies? Like, just, I don't know. Her face seems like it's perfection. She's got, I don't know if it's extensions or a wig, but it's like straight and super long and she has it in a low pony, like sleek. I just, she looks really pretty tonight. So, um, Dorit is now telling all the ladies about the guy that wants to meet Garcelle. You know, because like Kyle wasn't there when she told them. She's like, he's charming and he's successful and he's a great dresser. Flashback to a year ago, Dorit did tell Garcelle about him. And she said, he's 60, but he doesn't look 60. And Garcelle's like, oh, okay. In her confessional, Garcelle's like, so why hasn't he reached out in a year? Good question. Cut to Dorit and her confessional. People don't know this about me, but I'm a great matchmaker. In Erica's confessional. Yeah, Dorit tried to set me up once, but never came through with it. Back to Dorit's confessional. It's like a secret superpower I have. <laughs> So long story short, the guy that really likes Garcelle really wanted to be there, but he has COVID. So yeah, he shall remain a mystery, people. Oh, wow. Okay, so I don't know what's happening with Mauricio and PK, but we might need Rob on standby. You're muscular. No, I'm not. <laughs> Why are you saying that? You are. Oh, you're being funny. Ladies, I... That's all I'm saying. Okay, time for dinner. Rinna is already being obnoxious. Hi, everybody. Because the table is like, it, it, it's like a table here, a table here, and a table across the top. So it's this U shape, and the people that are sitting at this table and this table are pretty far apart from each other. So that's what the whole, hi, everybody, like she's waving to the people across the room. Erica is sitting right next to Rinna, though, and she goes, okay, I can have one cocktail, so what should I have? And Rinna goes, well, you said the champagne was very strong, so maybe have, like, a cocktail cocktail, you know? What the hell does that mean? First of all, I'm sorry, I thought she was going to say, you said the champagne was very strong, so maybe have that be your one drink. No. So Erica goes, well, I like vodka soda. Rena, why don't you have a vodka soda? What do you think of that? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Erica goes, maybe I'll try one. Rena, yeah, try one. Try one, see how it goes. See how you feel. Sutton is kind of staring daggers at them from across the table. I don't know if she can hear the conversation or if she's just looking at them like she hates them. So now Dorit stands up to make a speech. She thanks everyone for coming. She talks a little bit about homeless, not toothless, shameless, not ruthless. Kathy, out loud, is like, what's the name of the charity? Dorit, homeless, not toothless. Kathy, oh, that's a great name. Is it? Then Dorit said, Dr. Sam Sala is a cosmetic dentist and he has very generously offered to donate an entire smile. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He's donating an entire smile. Oh, God. Erica goes, wow. <laughs> yes, wow. Not a grin, people. No, not a smirk, not a Mona Lisa, but an entire smile. 
Diana tells us in her confessional, when I was in my 20s, I depended on charity to remove my wisdom teeth. So this is really full circle. Is it? Then she says, weirdly enough, I actually grew a second pair of wisdom teeth like a baby shark. <laughs> Maybe Dr. Sala will choose Diana as the worthy recipient of an entire smile. Dr. Sala is now having a little conversation with Garcelle, who is sitting right next to him. And Garcelle said, I have two 14-year-olds and a 30-year-old. He goes, 30? Garcelle, thank you. And I have no Botox, I'll have you know. And then he says, black don't crack. Like, it, like he just learned that. And he's trying it out. But um, she's like, that's right. And she was laughing. Kyle is seated at the, you know, at that top section. And she's at the end uh, near Sutton and Garcelle. And Kyle leans over to them and she said, I heard from Erica that Rena told Sutton to get the f out of her house. And Garcelle said, yes, she did. Kyle, but Rena said, no, I didn't say that. I said, maybe you should leave. And Garcelle goes, oh no. Then we get a flashback to when Rena and Kyle were FaceTiming while they were getting ready for this party. And Rena goes, oh no, I didn't say that. She wasn't doing or saying what I wanted. So I said, well, maybe you should just leave. Kyle is hysterically laughing. She wasn't doing or saying what you wanted. And then, of course, that makes Rinna fall into a fit of giggles. So anyway, Sutton says to her, I don't want to talk about this at the table. Well, that wasn't the answer Kyle wanted. So now Kyle leans the other way toward Dorit and says to her, when Rinna told Sutton to leave her house, did she say maybe you should leave or did she say get the f out? Dorit, get the f out of my house. Kyle, Rinna! Now she's yelling across to Rinna. Rinna, who's happy to be loud herself. Yeah, Kyle? Sutton, oh, this is a great way to do this conversation. Kyle, according to other people, you said get the out of my house. Rinna, I did not say the word f**k. I, 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 I know that. Mauricio, Rinna, I wasn't even there, but I know you said the word f**k. Rinna doesn't remember, but now she's like, well, if I did, there must have been a reason. Sutton refreshes her memory, which Sutton shouldn't have, but Sutton said, it was when I told you you were speaking out of both sides of your mouth. Rinna, oh, well, I mean, who would like that? <laughs> right? You know what? I think our own issues would be put to bed if not the fact that you did not go up to my husband when you had the chance. Sutton, when he was leading the wine tasting? Rinna, by the way, by the way. The charity people are like, okay, I mean, they warned us this is the price we would have to pay to get our charity mentioned on TV. Sutton goes, I sent him a very thoughtful text. Rinna, no, you didn't. Sutton. Oh, yes, I do believe I did. Rinna. Harry said you didn't respond to him. Now we get Sutton's confessional. Pulls out her glasses, reads the text to us. I said, happy birthday, Harry. Thank you again for including me last night. Wanting to keep the evening about celebrating you, I did not have a chance to express my apology for causing any embarrassment. This was never my intent. Sometimes miscommunication can wreak havoc. With sincerity, Sutton, with a kissy kitty cat face and a heart. This argument is just going back and forth, yelling from one table to the other. And I guess Crystal is actually friends with Dr. Sala's wife. And she gets a text from her. What the f***? So she's like embarrassed. And now it's time to reveal the surprise guest. The guy comes down and he's like whispering to Dorit, like, she's ready now. Now is the time to do this. Rin is not done though. Rin is like, and why was it your f business and not ourselves. Answer that. When I get that answer, I'll let it f***ing go. <laughs> yeah, right? Dorit's like, hold on, guys, guys, hold on. Rinna, if you're gonna make me do it across the f***ing table, I will do it. Well, you're doing it. You've already been doing it across the f***ing table. And by the way, it's not Sutton that's making you do it now across the table. It's Kyle. Dorit, guys, put a pin in it just for a minute. Rinna, 
Who started this? Sutton. Kyle. Garcelle. Kyle. Rinna. You. Kyle. <laughs> Oops. I mean, it makes everybody laugh. And then PK, instead of turning the lights down, brings them way up like it's last call. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Dorit, I told you. While PK's like fiddling with the remote. Dude, why? Why did he insist on working the lights? Were you stage crew in high school or something? What, did you think you have a talent for this? So anyway, now the lights go low and the guest is being brought down the stairs, but it's not dark enough. Kyle sees who it is and she's like, no way, no way. You're lying to me, Kathy. Who the hell is that? If you haven't watched the show yet, it was Melissa Etheridge. Sutton's like, oh, that's my girl crush. In Garcelle's confessional, she's like, where was Melissa Etheridge the whole time that screaming was going on? Just like waiting to come down the stairs till we finished? Oh God, you can dress us up, but you can't take us out. That's for sure. Anyway, she sings, come to my window. And after everyone is getting pictures taken with her, Rob, like a very good husband, takes a group picture where nobody looks good except Crystal and Melissa Etheridge. So anyway, she leaves and PK said, OK, you can continue to argue now. And Sutton goes, I'm not even mad anymore. Listen, Lisa, what do you want from me? Rena? you know what? I'm fine. I don't want to have this with you anymore. My mom's stuff came to my house today. So Rena breaks down and crying. I can't do this anymore. And Sutton goes, I don't want you to. Kathy, I can't hear Rinna goes, if you want to hear, come closer. My pain is not about Sutton. I'm trying to figure out how to live my life without my mom. And I don't know how to do it. And everyone's like, nobody knows how to do it. Of course, we understand. Rinna goes, I act so strong at times, but I'm really not. Mauricio, I think you're strong, Rinna. Oh, geez. She's not going to have a three-way with you, Mo. I mean, I guess you could check with Rob, but I don't think it's on the schedule. Yeah, no, it's sad. Not even Dr. Sala can give Rinna an entire smile tonight. And that is where this episode ends. <laughs> Guys, is, are we coming up to the finale soon? That was already episode 14. I feel like it's got to be either next week or the week after. Either way, I will be here for it all. And now it's time to open the viewer mailbag. <laughs> okay, the first question is from Gertie B., and she has a couple of questions. First, have you ever been recognized in public by a Jill Informer? And what is your favorite part of your new community? So um, the first question is easy. No, I don't even expect that I ever would. Not only because my channel is so very small, but also I look really different in person. You'll probably not see me with makeup on and my hair will be up in a bun or a ponytail or something. And I just don't think I would be recognized. I don't know. Um, but mostly I don't have a big enough, you know, following to actually run into somebody that knows me. And the second question, oh, I feel bad about the second question. You asked what my favorite part of my new community is. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by community, but I think you mean like you know, the people or maybe um, if I've joined any sort of like groups or clubs or anything like that. I am such a hermit. I, I've always been a hermit. And I know it might seem a little bit weird because it seems like I'm talking to all of you guys. So maybe you think I have a big personality or something. But you know, I'm just sitting in my house right now, talking to myself, basically. So um, that's where my comfort zone is. It's something I've been trying to work on with my therapist, actually. My husband, on the other hand, he already belongs to um, a bicycle club. They ride their bikes 20 miles every Tuesday, and he's applied for a job. He's going to be a music teacher at Guitar Center. So, like, he's like, he is getting involved in the community, but... It's not like I'm trying to get involved in. I, I can't because I'm too shy. I just really don't want to uh, meet people. But uh, so, yeah, I hate to like answer that way, but that's the truth. 
what I love about the area I live in is that like it's a five minute drive to this place where you can go on nature hikes and stuff. You know, there's a beautiful like Lake Robinson is this just this beautiful lake you can go and have a picnic and you can see the Blue Ridge Mountains, the lake. It, the atmosphere is so pretty here. And I swear to you that air is so much sweeter. We will go for a walk just around our block, my husband and I, and we're like, oh my God, it just smells good here, doesn't it? So those are all things that I love about where I live now, but I'm not really immersed in the community yet. Um, but this question is from Sherelle W. Your teeth look very white. What's your secret? Please share. Um, my secret is Crest ultra white or something. Bright white. I just use that. When I think of it, I do whiten my teeth with the strips. This is about me remembering things, guys. I never remember to do it. So, um, but I have like done things like that. But also, I think I'm not being modest. I think it has a lot to do with my lighting here. I don't know. I think it makes my hair look better. I think it might make my makeup look better or something. And I think it makes my teeth look whiter. I don't know. That's it. Oh, no, let me say this. I only have coffee in the morning and I brush my teeth after I have coffee too. So I, that might help because I'm not letting my teeth get stained by the coffee. I don't know. Maybe. Okay, the next question is from Benjamin S. And he says, my question is about mental health issues. I feel like you've mentioned before that you have had your own struggles with mental health. How do you manage to keep your great energy and stay positive? You always have such an uplifting vibe in your videos. Oh, thank you, Benjamin. Uh, yes, I've mentioned before that I have depression and anxiety. The anxiety is relatively new. I mean, by new, I mean like maybe the last five years or so. That's become more of an issue for me. Depression, since as long as I can remember, I've suffered with depression and I've seen counselors since I was late teens, early 20s. On and off, not, not constantly, but it's tricky to kind of answer your question. I have two answers, really. One, I would say I really am not feeling as happy as I'm acting like I am. And the other is I get an escapism kind of a thing from these shows. I like doing what I'm doing. I like making these videos. So that puts me in a better place already. <laughs> You know that saying, fake it till you make it. So I have filmed these videos at times when it was the last thing I felt like doing. And I had to push. I had to push myself to try to seem upbeat and happy because more than anything else, that's the important part of this to me. If I'm doing anything good here or valuable, which, you know... I'm not really, but if there's anything that would be of value in what I'm doing, it's that I'm providing an escape for other people. I can usually find a funny moment in almost anything these ladies do, and I like it. And nothing makes me feel better than when I get a comment from somebody saying, I had a really bad day. I watched your video. It made me laugh or, you know, it was silly and kind of got me out of a bad mood, whatever. Uh, that's like the best to me. So because of that, I don't want to come on here and be all morose and go, I'm having a really bad day, guys. I'm sure you guys would try to make me feel better because that's just what you're like. I can tell. But I'm, I don't want to do that. I want to be like the happy place for you guys to come to. So that helps me too, in a way, because I have a, a purpose. I, it's important to me and I, I have a purpose. So that's how I kind of get myself there. And then the other thing is by doing it, and this is something I learned from my therapist, by doing something, it becomes real. So if I keep acting upbeat and happy, it kind of makes my mood lift. It really does. Sorry, I'm going way too long with this. When things were so bad that I just couldn't, fake being happy, I had to take a break. And I've done that a couple of times and you guys have been very understanding. And, uh, you know, I'm always thinking you're not going to be here when I come back, but you, you've you come back. So that's really sweet. And that helps me too, you know. And um, so, yeah, I hope you're having a good day today. 
Okay, the next question is from Mrs. Ray. And she said, since we're on hair, how do you style your hair? Can you show us? Thanks. Yeah, so the girl that I go to now, Morgan, she taught me how to do this kind of curl with my hair. So I made this little video of me doing my hair right before I filmed today, and it explains kind of how I do this kind of curl. Okay, so I just take one small section of hair, twist it, and then I take the curling iron and I clamp it down on the twist, and then I just keep working it down and until I get like as far as I want to where I want to leave the end straight. And then instead of releasing it, I unwind it from the curling iron like that and then let it go. And I, you get this kind of twisted with a couple kinks in it kind of a thing. And uh, then I just leave it until it cools and move on to you know the next section. But that's how I do them all. You just take the section, twist, clamp onto the twist, curl it around until you get to the end or however much you want to leave straight at the end and then unwind it and then pull it off or, you know, open the clamp. And that's kind of it. You just work section to section. Nothing's changed far as the eye can see And I can see pretty well There's no telling how you're going to be A fantasy we can settle And guys, I use this magic root cover-up from L'Oreal. I just did it in my part there, and it works great. Okay, then when the hair is cool, I just kind of flip over, and I'm just kind of fluffing it out upside down, and then flip back, and then I can just kind of make it look normal. And that's it. Okay, so I hope that kind of explained it for you guys. So I've gone too long now, so I'm going to stop right here. I will answer the rest of the questions next week. And if you guys have any more questions you want to know, just leave them in the comments down below. As always, if you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel and please give this a thumbs up. I'm an Amazon affiliate. Click on one of my links in the description box below and Anything you purchase within 24 hours that's in your cart, I will get a small credit for. So um, thank you for that. And I will see you next week for the next recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Bye.